Hey everybody, welcome to this mini movie review. Usually when I do a movie review for the podcast, I try to keep the movie within the last couple of years, five to six years, and it's usually a movie that I haven't seen before. And I'm keeping most of that now, but I'm doing something, I'm going back a little more than I normally do year-wise. And I may even try switching a few things up in the future of movies from 40, 50 plus years back that I've never seen before from time to time. But with this movie, 2009's The Loved Ones. I have heard reviews about it, heard of the movie, I never got around to watching it, and then recently I got a text from my brother and he was like, hey, I saw this movie and it's crazy and everything and you should check it out. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to be reviewing 2009's The Loved Ones. Let's talk a little about it before I go and watch the movie. So this is an Australian horror film. Uh, it's written and directed by Sean Byrne and stars Xavier Samuel, Robin McLeavy, Victoria Thane, Jessica McNamee, Richard Wilson, and John Brumpton. It's about a, a teenager played by Xavier Samuel who finds himself at a female classmate's place. She's throwing a party, but it's a very like messed up party. Basically, it sounds like he, I mean, from what I can tell and from what I've heard from things, it's he gets kind of kidnapped in a way by her and at her house and then she's throwing this like messed up party like in her head because she's not right. It gets kind of graphic and things like that. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's more to it. The cover on Wikipedia is a guy who's tied up in a prom outfit, like a prom suit, a tux. That's what I'm going for, a tux. And he's tied up in a chair and then the female classmate who is played by Robin McLeavy is behind him with, with a little paper crown like she's the prom queen and she's got her hands on his shoulders. And he doesn't look super happy about that. So we'll see why that is. I've heard it, like I said, I've heard a few things. I've heard a, a review or two on it. So I know some of what I'm getting into with this movie. So it's a little different than how I do other reviews. Normally I, I like to go in kind of blind. So The Loved Ones was released September 13th, 2009 at the Toronto International Film Festival. And then November 4th, 2010 to Australia. Like I said, it is an Australian film. It runs 84 minutes. That's fine. I'm kind of in the mood for a short movie right now anyway. And I, I wanted to pick something that was kind of spooky, kind of creepy, because it is October and I want it to be like a nice spooky movie. I have a couple other movies in mind for later. But yeah, we're going to keep it a spooky Halloween. Or if you listen to My Favorite Murder and you're a murderino, a spooky Halloween. So yeah, I'm going to be doing that this month. So the budget for this movie was $4 million. It didn't do too great in the box office. I'm not really quite sure how released it was to actual theaters. Uh, it seems like it mostly did like film festivals and then went on to DVD. It did have a limited theatrical release in 2012 in the United States, but it was only shown in like Austin, Chicago, Houston, Los Angeles, New York, and San Francisco. So yeah, it hasn't really had like a huge theatrical release, but I have heard good things. So I'm not going to get too much more into the movie. And yeah, I'm going to go watch 2009's The Loved Ones and I'll be back to let you know what I think. So I finished watching the loved ones. So I'm going to start by just saying that all the actors, actresses, and things in the movie, I thought they all did a really good job. I thought everyone played their roles well. I liked a lot of the characters. I liked how there were some characters that really didn't have a huge role in the movie except for kind of bringing you out of the gruesomeness of the opposite part of the movie, which was kind of nice. I feel like it would have been a little harder to watch maybe if it was just like constant. So also another thing I liked about this movie was the soundtrack. I thought the music choices were great for this movie. And so I'm going to start out talking about the movie from the beginning. And it opens up to the song Lonesome Loser by Little River Band, which I thought was a good choice. 
uh, you have Brent, right? The main character's name is Brent. He's in high school. He's driving down the road with his dad and they're just chilling, hanging out. They kind of joke on and off. Like you can tell it's a decent relationship between the two of them. It's just enough time to get you interested in the father-son relationship. It kind of reminded me of the intro to the movie, The Final Girls. If you haven't seen The Final Girls, go check it out. It's a very good movie. Anyway, back to the loved ones. So it reminded me kind of that and they're driving and they're not really, at one point the son's not paying attention a little bit because they're talking and he's the one driving, the high schooler. And then they look up and there's a guy who's all bloody in the middle of the road. And then they do that weird swerve thing where it's like they really like cut it, you know, and they go flying into a tree. And then it cuts to six months later. Earlier, Brent, six months ago, he had kind of longer hair. He looked like he was in a good mood. Things were good. You can definitely see the difference after the six months. So they cut to the six months and he's in school. He's in the hallway, uh, like lockers and stuff at the high school. And you can definitely see the difference. Like his hair is kind of greasy. It's longer. His lips and his nose were like real white. He's just like pale. Something didn't turn out good with this accident. And he's talking to his friend Jamie and he's getting some weed from Jamie and they're just kind of talking. And there's supposed to be a, it's kind of, it's supposed to be prom, but they call it the end of school dance. Jamie sees this kind of gothy, metal-y type chick. Like she's got like, you know, all black and she, her hair is like straight down and she's like all sad. I don't know. And her name is Mia and he really likes her. Jamie does. So he takes this chance and asks her to the dance and she says yes and he's pumped. And I really liked Jamie. I think he was kind of one of my favorites as a supporting character. He seemed really sweet that he really did like this girl and... I don't know. I really liked him in the movie, even if he didn't really have a huge role besides just being like a comedic relief for the movie. Remember Jamie and Mia, they'll come back later. So now Brent is left in the hallway by himself and this other girl comes up and she likes to wear a lot of pink. And so she comes up and she just kind of stares at him and he's like, all right. And then she's like, would you go to the dance with me? And he lets her down really nice. Like, it's not like he makes fun of her. It's not like he laughs or is in disbelief. He's just like, oh no, sorry, I'm going with Holly. And she's like, okay. And then as he's coming out of the high school, he meets up with Holly and Holly just got her driver's license. So she's like, well, I'm going to pick you up for the prom end of school dance. And then it cuts to, she has like a little Volkswagen Beetle and Holly's blonde. And I, don't, I mean, she's cute and stuff. I feel like she could be a little nicer to Brent a little bit. So they're in her car and the whole time they're fooling around in her car in the daylight, which I think is still kind of on school property. I guess they didn't go too far from the school, but they're fooling around. The whole time he's like, oh, you know, you'll never guess who asked me to the dance. And he's holding out the information on her uh, about who did it. And so she goes to pull off his shirt and she sees he's wearing, Brent's wearing a chain with a, a razor blade around his neck. And then he's got slashes on his side. So he's obviously dealing with a lot. He's been cutting himself. She sees it. She's, I mean, she doesn't judge him. I think she may have already known a little bit. And then he said, he can't even look at her when he says he loves her. He's kind of like, I love you. And then they just start, you know, going at it or whatever. And while they're doing that, Lola is near the car and she sees it. She's watching them. So I don't think they went too far from the school. I'm like, all right, well. So Holly goes to take Brent home, but she has to drop him off down the street because his mother, and this is where you find it out more, his mother is terrified of him being in a car. Even, I mean, and Holly just got her license anyway, but she's like, am I picking you up for the dance? And he's like, I don't know. I have to let you know. I have to talk to my mom. Because what happened is during the car accident, his father died. So in this past six months, everything has gone to shit. He's cutting himself. He's depressed. His mom is like pale and skinny, sitting in a dark house all the time. Like it, they're really upset. Like it's really bad. And before he gets out of the car, he tells Holly who it was. He was like, oh, Lola Stone asked me to the dance. And so Holly, I didn't really care for her much a little bit because she calls Brent emotionally stunted. And I'm like, girl, I know you're like 17. But he inadvertently killed his father and his mom kind of blames him for it. He's cutting himself and he's high all the time to deal with it. And no one's getting this kid help. Like a lot of these people in this movie needed some help, some therapy, something. Medication, yoga, I don't know, something. Because I just want to like hug all these people. So I'm like, give him a break. It's been six months. So he goes home, him and his mom, Brent and his mom getting a kind of like a fight about the dad death and the fact that Holly wants to pick him up. So he takes off like he's all he likes to listen to a lot of like grungy music and stuff. And they've had, a, they had like I said, they had a lot of good music, some stuff. I mean, I didn't really know, but I enjoyed the music in the movie. The Dirt Bombs, Mammoth Mammoth, Black Like Vengeance, Cosmic Psychos. 
So he puts his headphones in and he has this really cute Australian cattle dog, I think it is, following him and they go off to this mountain cliff. He takes that razor blade and he holds it in his hand and he's just letting it like cut him and bleed as he walks. And I'm like, oh, dude. And he's got like his Metallica t-shirt and his like flannel and grungy jeans and stuff. And so he's mad and just, he just can't deal with it. And, and him and the dog lay down and I'm like, that dog's like real fun. He's like, I don't care if you're sad, I'll hang out with you. There was no leash or anything, which I don't know if that's common with Australian cattle dogs. Maybe. I used to have a professor that I knew of at my college who had an Australian cattle dog and it never was on a leash. Like she would bring it to school and it just followed her everywhere. Like she didn't have to say anything. She'd just keep walking and it would go. So, I mean, maybe that's just like a thing they do. I don't know. Anyway, so he's up on the mountaintop and it's starting to get late and his mom's worried because she knows the dance is coming up and Holly's supposed to come get him or whatever. And so she's trying to call him. She's trying to call Brent. He's not picking up. And then as he's kind of zoning out with his music, a body comes up behind him and puts a cloth over his mouth. So the dog who was with him also gets stabbed or some sort of injury. I think he's stabbed. And it's a really sad scene. I'm not sure if he gets dropped off at the house because it seems like a really long way to go. But this poor dog gets stabbed and he drags himself to the front step of his house. And then Holly has to rush him to the vet and he ends up dying in the car on the way there. And it's sad. And I'm like, oh, I like the dog. That's a bummer. You know, because <laughs> I'm like, you don't have to do that. But then just the fact that he, I think, dragged himself over there. I'm like, oh, no, that's bad. So he gets kidnapped. So then it kind of bounces back to Jamie, right? Remember his friend? So now you got Jamie and he's going to go pick up Mia for the dance. And it's so cute. He did wear one of those t-shirts where it looks like a suit. And it's kind of like a cheap way of going to the dance or whatever. But he also threw on like a cream color pants and suit coat. He smoked some weed before he went to go pick her up because he was nervous. But then her dad's a cop. So then I was like, what are you doing? Like he's spraying. He took, what was funny is Jamie, he gets done smoking. And then he takes like household spray, like Glade, and just sprays it on his body. I'm like, she doesn't want you to smell like apple cinnamon right now. Maybe you should have some cologne. Uh, so he picks her up and she's just like all pale faced and like whatever you know but I think she kind of thinks he's cute like she's kind of like this might as well happen and you're like what's her deal because the parents don't seem too bad I mean they're quiet but they seem fine and that's fine if you're goth or whatever but it's like you could tell like something else is going on (laughs) maybe with her a little bit and he brings her flowers and everything and she don't know what to do and she's got this cute like short little black dress on and and so then they get in his car and they go off to the dance right So now we're at Lola's house. This is where it starts getting kind of like icky squicky. You're in Lola's house. It's just like a small house, kind of in the middle of nowhere a little bit. It seems like a man comes into Lola's bedroom and there's a lot of pink and he's got a bag for her. It's a pink bag. Inside the bag is a prom dress and some shoes. And you're still not quite sure what's going on, but like I knew what was going to happen with this movie. So, and obviously she's on the cover. So, you know, something's up. So she goes to put the dress on, but she's like, oh, dad, wait just tell me how I look. And she starts undressing. And when she's down to like her bra and underwear, they kind of do like a male gaze from her father's point of view. And that's where I'm like, oh, we're going with that. Okay, so this is gonna get interesting. She puts the dress on and it was cute on her actually. And it's all pink. So she gets all ready. Brent wakes up, he's bound to a chair. He's tied to a chair. The chair is screwed into the floor. So he's got like this tux. Luckily they had one that fit him. He had his tux on. And Lola and her dad, whose name is Eric, have decorated the house for prom and it's I'd like there's a disco ball that goes the whole time which I thought was fun and the song that Lola likes to listen to is Not Pretty Enough by Casey Chambers which when I heard that when she was like waiting for the prom dress I was like oh that sounds appropriate too that's a good choice you know you're in your high school you got one one or two songs it's like when you want to be all angsty just like play it over and over again and this was her song so she's playing Not Pretty Enough over and over you know And so it's like prom in her house. There's a kitchen table and a small little living room and they got like a banner that says the end of school prom, dance, whatever. They got the disco ball going. They got him at the table and they all sit down to have dinner. And they have picked up like a rabbit or something on the road for dinner, I think, that they cook roadkill. And there's a a woman across there too, an older woman who's in like a blue prom dress and she looks gone. Like she's just, she's got a hole in her head, like a little spot in her head and she... She's like dead to the world, but she's still alive. And you're like, oh, okay, so she's had a lobotomy. Like I knew about the lobotomy, so I was like, okay, I know what that is. Uh, They call her Bright Eyes. It's her mother. So Brent's freaking out. He's coming too. He's like, what's going on? So they take, apparently they take bleach and inject it into his throat and it destroys his vocal cords. I'm not 
sure if that's a thing. One of the things with this movie is there's a lot of medical type procedures and things that happen that I'm like, I'm not sure that would really go through or how these people are surviving, but I'ma let it go. So she injects his throat with bleach. He can't talk, so he's like, <sighs> you know, and he can't scream. So then they just start humiliating him, right? Because that's what she likes. It starts out with trying to eat dinner and she's being weird and everything. And then he says he has to go to the bathroom. And so she makes him pee like right there into a glass that she just drank milk from. But then he won't pee. So then she's like, oh, are you lying? And so then the dad like picks up a hammer and he's going to hit him or something with it. And then eventually he pees like at the last minute. And she's like, that's right. Great. And then she just, I don't know, she's being really creepy and gross. And I thought she did a really good job. Some of it was a little comical, but I was like, this girl's something else. And it's made me so mad, though. I'm like, this movie's going to piss me off because he didn't do anything wrong. Not that I'm saying he should warrant being kidnapped and mutilated like this, but he literally just turned her down. It wasn't like he was like, oh, ew, you're gross or anything, really. Like, he was just like, no, thank you. So it's like, why? <laughs> why do you have to kidnap him? So then she is also showing him a scrapbook. So she's been doing this a couple of times with past guys. One of the pictures looked like she was pretty young. So I think she was probably like eight when it first started. And what I'm guessing is whatever stuff she likes to do with these guys, her mom wasn't a big fan of. So maybe they gave her a lobotomy to kind of get her out of the picture. And then there also seems to be, you know, obviously a bit of an underlying incestual relationship with her and her father. And I'm not sure how many times they've acted out this thing. It seems like it's been at least three or four times, but it seems like it started pretty young. I didn't realize this before until just now, and that makes it a little more interesting. So, because hmm, I'm kind of like reading over some notes about it. So he's looking through the scrapbook, and the guy that he hit six months ago is in the scrapbook. He was the last guy who got away. He's the only one I think who's ever gotten away. So now it's kind of tied back to that. So you're like, that's the bloody guy he saw that he missed with the car or hit with the car or whatever. And it turns out, which you don't kind of realize until later or whatever, they don't really touch on it that much, enough to where you could really pick it up. But this guy's name is Timmy Valentine. Well, Timmy is the brother of Mia. That's kind of why she's all messed up. She misses her brother. So at this point, Brent freaks out, kicks Lola, pushes her into the floor and gets out, right? So he takes off running. It was actually kind of funny the way he was like hopping with his feet. He goes running outside and he gets up in this tree and the dad's chasing him with the car and they end up knocking him out of the tree. And so they bring him back in, they catch him. And this is when it really starts getting like real icky and gruesome. I literally was like, oh no, because they grabbed two knives, like steak knives or something, and they take that hammer and they nail his feet into the ground. This time the dad's like, I'm not messing around, we're taking his shoes off. They nail his feet into the ground with these knives and he won't cry. He's so broken anyway, like it's just a really tough scene to watch. And then she carves her initials into his chest like she did with all the other guys, then covers it with salt and he's just screaming. It's a real intense scene. There's just a lot of that going on. Between that, we're jumping back and forth with Jamie and Mia. They get to the dance. She doesn't really want to go in. They end up getting super high and drinking like a bottle of vodka till they're pretty drunk. He's having a hard time keeping up with her. He's like, okay, like maybe we should go to the dance, you know? <laughs> then we go back to Lola's house and now it's time to crown the prom queen or the dance queen or whatever. And they have crackers. A lot of times there's little paper crowns in them. And so she gets a pink paper crown because she's the queen. Frank gets a blue paper crown because he's the prom king or whatever. Then she comes over and admits to Brent that like she's looking for her prince and he's just the frog and then her dad is the prince and then they start to dance and I'm like, uh-oh. I wonder if this has been done over and over. These three other guys or whatever she had is just the process they go through every year. No matter what, he's the prince. So they're like about ready to kiss. The dad seems like he's trying to fight it, but not really. Like it's a problem, <laughs> like this whole family dynamic. And then right before they kiss, Brent interrupts them. Then they open up this trap door on the floor. Now, I feel like I would have been more impressed with this whole thing or more. I, I really enjoyed the movie. I really did. But I did know about the hole in the floor with the guys in it. So they open up this hole in the floor and they throw like some food and just pour some water down there. I'm like, all right. And you can hear noises. It's all the previous guys. There's like three guys down there, I think, that she's done this to and thrown down there. 
they all have like long hair they're all nasty and gross i don't think you really see them yet but they're down there and part of me is like i don't understand how they would even be alive i mean they're living in their own filth it has to be horrible down there and they're barely getting any water or drink there's no way especially if the one was from when she was like eight years old so now they want to give a lobotomy to brent so they go to drill a hole in his head it's real rough there's steam coming up from the drill she can't quite get it as well, so the dad tries to do it, and it's just a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. And then they're going to pour boiling water into the hole to kind of boil his brain. I don't think this is a thing either. Maybe it is. What I thought was interesting is that the mom seemed pretty comatose from it, but the guys downstairs were a bit more active. They would run around and feed themselves, so I'm not sure what the difference was. But Lola's doing this herself, and before she can pour the water in... Brent manages to get himself free, right? Then it's like real gross because then he gets free and he takes the razor blade and starts like slashing at Eric's face. He starts pulling the knives out of his feet and he starts stabbing the dad and just is just real bloody. Everything's bloody. In between this, we cut back to Brent's mom. She calls a cop, the cop guy, she calls Mia's dad to help look for Brent. Holly's at her house. She's sad. She finds a card that Brent said he loved her in. Like she realizes she's a piece of shit. And then the cop guy's looking, trying to vindicate himself. Like the cop guy really wants to find Brent if something is truly wrong because he couldn't find his own son. So, I mean, I get that because he'd make some really poor choices later. And then it cuts over to Jamie and Mia. They go into the dance. They start dancing. She's pretty much passed out. He's just kind of dancing with her. He's really excited, but I think he's just super stoned. She starts getting a little too grabby in front of everybody. It's very embarrassing and uncomfortable to watch. I'm like, this poor guy, I, he's definitely going to remember this night. Then one of the chaperones comes over and he's like, hey, you can't do that here. If you're going to do something like that, take it away from here. I thought he, he handled it very calmly. So they go back out in the car and they start going at it. But then it gets broken up again by the same chaperone who's like, I meant off the school property. Get off the property. <laughs> he handles it very calmly, but I'm like, this poor chaperone. He's like, I'm just trying to make sure these kids don't make babies on property. <laughs> like, you know, he's just like, go, get out of here. So then they put their clothes on and then they leave. Jamie takes Mia back. She's looking pretty rough. He's just like, says bye to the dad. He's like, peace out. She goes up to her room and she's crying and you see the picture of the boy and you figure out that that was her brother. And because like at first I kind of thought maybe the cop was having a, an affair or something with Brent's mom, the way that his wife was acting. But it, I think it's because she knows that the cop dad is going to try to vindicate what he feels is his own error. Everyone's just real sad. So back over at Lola's house, things are getting crazy. Brent pushes the dad, Eric, into the hole. So all the guys grab him and they start tearing him apart. I don't think they're necessarily like eating him, but they're like ripping out his throat. So they're killing him. And now Lola's like, oh snap. So she's like, my dad's dead. What am I supposed to do? She pushes Brent into that cellar. And then for some reason, she puts everything in the hole, which was really dumb. She throws a flashlight and a hammer and all kinds of st like stuff in there. I'm like, well, isn't that convenient? I'm like, then why would she even do that? So then he's got like a light he can see and he's fighting off the guys who are coming after him and he takes them out. She's mad. Lola's still mad. So she goes in and smothers her mom. Brent's date, Holly, figures out, she starts thinking about what he said about Lola and she's like, well, maybe on a whim, you could go check out Lola. I don't know what made her decide to do that, but I guess she was just desperate. She's been up all night. She calls the cop dad. She's like, what about Lola Stone's house? So he goes over there, looks in the window, sees it's bloody and just goes in. And I'm like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I know you're trying to vindicate yourself, but it's like, maybe call for backup. He finds Bran. He's like, oh my gosh, he's looking down there. And then from behind, Lola stabs him in the face, I think with a meat cleaver. And then he dies and falls down. So now Lola's like, okay, Bran, I'm going to go kill your mom. So I'm going to go. I'll see you later. Peace. Like the sun's coming up. She's got her stuff and she's crazy now. She's just really crazy. She's all bloody. She's got a broken nose or something. And she's like, I'm going to go kill your mom because you killed my dad. And I'm like, ooh, I hate that logic because it's like, you started it. And so, and then she's like, and then I'm going to stab Holly in the heart because you broke my heart or whatever. And so she leaves. Brent climbs out. He takes like the corpses of the, all the dead bodies in there and stacks them up. I think he maybe uses some of the bones down there too. There's a lot of bones. Or he like figures it out that he could stack it up and he climbs out, right? He's got a hole in his head. He's been cut all over his chest. He's got two big holes in his feet. Somehow he's able to drive a car. So he goes out into the cop car and he gets in the cop car. And I'm like, I don't know how he's able to push down on the pedals, but okay. Maybe it's adrenaline. 
So Holly is also heading out towards Lola's house. She wants to check it out, see what's going. The sun has come up, I guess it's like 7, 7.30 or something. This is a really fun scene. Lola's walking down the middle of the road. No one's going to stop her. Like, I guess no one's around here. She's bloody. She's got her scrapbook. She's got her knife. She's got her crown. I think she still had the crown on. And she's just walking down the street barefoot covered in blood. She's just, I guess, walking into town. She's going to go walk her whole way. Hopefully she'll make it. I don't know. And Holly shows up in her little Volkswagen bug. And she's still in her dance dress. And she ends up hitting the scrapbook because Lola throws the scrapbook into the air. So she's like, what was that? And so she stops. And this scene, this whole ending scene was really fun, I thought. So she gets into the car and she attacks Holly and they're like fighting, right? So like legit fight. She's trying to stab her and they end up falling out the other side of the car. And Holly takes off running, right? And Lola's just slowly running after her, which I'm like, same, I don't, I wouldn't be able to catch up. And they're just running down the, the road. And so Brent's on his way in the car and he's going like 140 miles an hour because he's really trying to catch up with her, I guess. Slow down. He just about hits Holly. He comes over the hill, almost hits her. He's like, whoop, you know, swoops out of the way and ends up accidentally hitting Lola. Like he didn't even know. It was all timed very perfectly. You're like, well, there, good thing that happened. So he hits Lola. He hits her pretty hard. He drives a little bit farther ahead and he stops. And there's a good scene here where I went back and I, I watched it a second time real quick because Holly goes to get in the police car and I think she's thinking it's the actual cop guy. So she gets in and when she first sees it's Brent, she does like this double take, like what? Freak out of him. That was really good. Like I went back and I was like, I want to see that again. So they're just staring at each other. Like he's all bloody. She's like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, just get out of there. And so this scene is so cool. So it's a long shot on the side and you see the car and they're like, oh my God, we're okay. And then far away you see Lola and she's on the ground and she's dragging herself slowly in her pink prom dress toward the car. And I'm la laughing because you can hardly see it. But it's just a little bit of movement and she looks bad. She's got a road rash all over her arms. Like her back leg is broken. I think it's like sticking up all funky and she's dragging herself and she's slowly trying to get there. And I'm like, oh, back it up. And so they do. They reverse the car and she's just looking forward the whole time. And like there's a slow part of her just staring there like, well, I guess my trip's over. I don't know how many times she would have done this prom thing in the future, in her 40s. I don't know. She would have kept just doing it probably. Brent backs up, runs over her head, crushes her skull. She's dead. So then Brent and Holly come back home. The mom, Carla, comes out, sees her son and Holly embraces them both. And the movie ends. And I liked it. I thought it was really fun. Even if I did know what was going on, I think it would have maybe even been more impactful, you know, had I not. But I still actually really enjoyed the movie. So I'm trying to be a little more lenient with my ratings. And I want to rate it out of drills. I'm going to rate it with drills. So out of 10 drills, I want to give 2009's The Loved Ones 7 out of 10 drills. It's a really fun movie. Go check it out. Thank you for listening and downloading and subscribing and Checking out this mini movie review.